Hello sir, today I will be talking about why GPI should replace GDP. So let's get into it. And before we get into anything, we need to understand what GDP is. And for now, let's just replace well-being for a minute with growth. Basically, growth in statistical topics such as GDP and indirectly statistical topics such as happiness. To begin, I just want to say GDP is a fairly narrow way to measure an economy because you know it only uses market prices to value goods and services it's not really the most accurate and it is measured over time with frames such as quarterly or yearly to display economic health now the actual calculation for gdp is quite simple it's basically gdp equals private consumption plus gross investment plus government investment plus government spending plus exports minus imports which kind of translates into profit. So overall, GDP just measures economic progress. But as we know, it is not the most accurate way to measure economic health. Now moving on to selection. So I, out of the many selections we have, I decided that HDI and GPI are the best two options that we can select. Now, in terms, there are alternative measures. The first, such as measures proposed, was the United Nations Development Program Human Development Index, which is HDI. Now, it looks at more than just monetary incomes, but also looks at society's health, such as life expectancy, education, so programs and expected slash actual years of schooling, education and index, standard of living, GNP, sorry, GNI, Per capsia. Now, in terms of the genuine progress indicator, GPI, it gets rid of crime, pollution, income inequality, underemployment, loss of nature, and the loss of leisure time. But with all these gone, the good things are also coming in. Genuine progress indicator also incorporates international trade parenting slash homework, personal consumption, higher education, volunteering, and consumer durables. Now let's get down to the first point of why I personally selected GPI. Now, let's start about GDP exclusion. GDP, which stands for gross domestic product, doesn't display too many crucial lifestyle topics as listed below such as working public services, the environment, accessible education, safety from violence or harassment, and freedom of speech. G GDP is not the measure of humanity well-being. Good examples of that would be Saudi Arabia, who have a GDP currently of $695.6 billion as of 2020. Now, two years ago, on the 24th of June, licenses were finally issued to women, and their GDP at the time was $786.5 billion. This basically means women can finally drive. And although it's hard to believe, it is actually a true fact. And, oh, my apologies. And its GDP was $756.4 billion just four years before that. And it has always been around $700 billion over the past 10 years. So that decision didn't make such a huge impact as we might think it would have. Now that is something, or a country with a high GDP, but is it really doing that well? Poland, however, is a perfect example of how it is really growing. As I said at the start, we should replace well-being with growth just for the time being. Now Poland's GDP is currently at 490 billion, being around 500 billion since 2008. Over the past two decades, they have had the most stable and highest growth in the EU. Wages and jobs were increased while poverty declined. Poland invested in the right things such as education, also allowed the economy to international markets, making firms more productive. Now, while global political uncertainty continues to weigh on the growth and fiscal outlooks, Poland decides to keep their processes simple and make it favor the people. With innovation and equality, no labor costs, is creating a better, a better balance 
between job security and market flexibility. Here we can see, it's hard to see at the moment maybe, the GDP per capita, which basically shows how much they're growing. Now, GD GPI does not only look at statistics unlike GDP, which results in it encourages policymakers to think broader terms of economic welfare. Second point, GDP externalities counting. So to start off, let's look at the chart that I have provided. It basically talks about CO2 emissions per capita, at least in the US dollar. Now, with basic geography knowledge, you can see that this is not good for the environment. GDP only counts for externalities, which is not enough economic evidence. So GDP increases by two times during pollution's generation. Contrasting GPI counts initial pollution as a loss instead of a gain, which probably equals the amount of a cleanup. So like to clean it all up to fix it. And even with those fixes such as mistakes, sorry, with the fixing these mistakes, the negative impact on the environment is often not recoverable, at least not in a short term. GPI basically balances GDP spending against external costs. Now, moving on to the third point. GPI provides wider and as we learned, GPI, GDP is very narrow when it comes to information collected to get a result. Now, GPI is actually the opposite as it includes voluntary and unpaid work, environmental impacts, and the time per various income distributions, so maybe labor hours. Now, diving into voluntary work, one of the examples listed, the most important jobs in society are actually done at home, in community settings, such as childcare or other volunteering work. My apologies. Okay. Uh, GDP would ignore contributions such as these voluntary works. However, GPI would actually focus on them regardless of their money changes at hand. GPI would... I apologize for that, sir. Um, continuing, GDP would ignore such contributions, but GD GPI would actually focus on them regardless of their money changes at hand. Now, GPI would include the value of household work figured at the estimated cost of hiring people or a person to do household tasks. GDP doesn't take these facts into consideration, resulting in it being even more misleading. Now, SETA, although this is a big jump, I just want to explain how SETA is related to the upcoming example. Now, SETA, which stands for Sustainable Economic Development Assessment, is how governments basically try to improve their way to look at things. Now, as you can see here, it is uh, economics, includes economics, includes investments and sustainability. Now, sustainability is not only just the income or whatever, it is honestly including environment, civil, society, governance, and income equality in the same time. Now, it measures well-being, and this is where we get off of this growth uh, persona. We can just say well-being again. I would like to say how GDP would explain or would propose and display their logic. A teacher's average salary, at least per glass door, is $42,579. That's the average teacher's salary, which is significantly less than a financial trader value of them, which is at $124,241. Now, we don't need to know anything about economics or about finance. We should all agree that teachers are help society way more than financial traders and in fact they are one of the most important you know they have one of the most important jobs in the world now gpi would not look at certain things in these direct numbers gdp however considers a financial trader more important than a teacher it's abysmal so to conclude GPI is simply more accurate and complete for human well-being. It looks at more than just money. 
It assesses well-being, happiness, and quality of life of its people rather than just looking at numbers and only numbers. Now, it's also the best tracker of genuine social wealth, economic wealth, and natural wealth. So it means it doesn't directly like, or literally ignore all numbers. I believe that GPI should definitely replace GDP as it is simply the superior one in what matters most. Thank you for your time. I hope you have a great day. Goodbye.